everybody. Time for the news. Got a bad feeling about this. But here's Star Wars news. The taxation of trade routes to outlying star systems is in dispute. Hoping to resolve the matter with a blockade of battleships, the Trade Federation has stopped all shipping to the small planet of Naboo. While the Congress of the Republic endlessly debates this alarming chain of events, the Supreme Chancellor's leadership has been called into question by Queen Amidala of Naboo after Chancellor Valorum responded to the blockade with a proposal to possibly open a committee to assess the potential necessity of maybe investigating the situation. I've come before you to resolve this attack on our sovereignty now. I was not elected to watch my people suffer and die while you discuss this invasion in a committee. If this body is not capable of action, I suggest new leadership is needed. I move for a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorum's leadership. And so it looks like we're going to be getting a new chancellor soon. The election is in full swing, and we'll get to that. But, like, this is intergalactic news that could alter the galaxy. And a trade dispute? That's what was the final straw on Valorum, a wholly ineffectual corrupt bureaucrat in the pocket of Big Blaster. But this, 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 this trade dispute, this possible invasion committee, is what breaks the Bantha's back. Like, don't get me wrong, the Trade Federation sucks, and what's happening to Naboo isn't good, but to illustrate what I'm getting at, I want to talk about this cute little, a little feel-good story. Human youngling beats Sebulba, wins freedom in pod race. And first of all, nowhere in the piece does the Times point out that Sebulb is a flat hawther who beats his wife and has ties to a Sith rights group, but whatever, the rest of the story, it's, it's presented sort of to make you feel like, wow, wow, there, there's still some good out there, you know, there's some hope. But um, I don't know, aside from the fact that pod racing is the most deadly sport short and long term, and aside from the fact that we only really let prisoners, slaves, and younglings do it, aside from the exploitation and commercialism, and aside from the fact that Bloopus Moople still hasn't gotten a contract, I wonder why. And aside from the fact that academy pod racers don't even get paid despite the revenue they generate, and so on and so on. Well, aside from all of that, the slavery and stuff, right? Like. Like, hey, 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 queen of a planet. Hate to interrupt your dispute on the, um, taxation of trade routes to outlying star systems, but, um, here's some news. The kid who won his freedom was a slave first. That's why he needed to win his freedom, which he did, force bless him. But also, his mom's still a slave. Lots of us are. There's just slavery here. So, like... If the Republic needs better leadership, maybe it could be on the slavery stuff? Valorum? Maybe? Is my point. Another thing that the Times piece doesn't mention is that the pod race won by the slave was hosted by Jabba Desilijik Tiur, better known as Jabba the Hutt, a wealthy businessman. Maybe you've heard of his barge, often referred to as the Youngling Express and I don't want to have to explain why. The Youngling Express has been ridden by many of the Republic's elite, as revealed in barge logs, leaked to the now defunct Minocker. The logs include, oh, 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 Chancellor Valorum, that's so weird. Also, Senator Sheev Palpatine and Senator Morp Morp, Spice Magnets, Welbs Pierre Hulmany, and Boff Boff Weem, Alderanian Prince Andrew, and former Chancellor Squalip Oon. So, I don't know. Maybe this, maybe this trade route tax dispute is, it's like, it's like, it's like the person, it's the worst thing ever. But, before we kick this walking sedative out the blast doors, maybe, maybe someone could just ask Valorum, what Bib Fortuna, the person in charge of getting younglings for the Youngling Express, was doing at his daughter's wedding. Aisle seat, buddy. Anyway, in other news, Chumba Dawanga, Batupa Chono, Bagu Bapcho. Meanwhile, although the election for Chancellor has just started, it's already not a great time. 
Let's uh, let's check out the nominees who are gonna they're gonna step up and cut through the corruption and the noise, protect and, and provide, stop the endless Star Wars, hold the Womp Rats and Coruscant accountable. And oh, speaking of Womp Rats, here's some news: another feral Womp Rat attack outside of Mos Espa. If only someone had warned us. Interesting. But the, the candidates, all right, the, the leaders. Well, there's there's Sheev Palpatine, the um from the the Jabba barge logs, so cool. Also, he's the senator who incidentally voted for the Sarlacc War and can be seen on camera whispering into the ear of the queen right before she called for a vote of no confidence in Valorum. But what I'm, I'm sure it's all on the up and up. Another candidate is Ainley Team, seen here being the guy who seconded the vote of no confidence in Valorum. And then we have Bail Organa, a senator who also voted for the Sarlacc War and is the husband to the queen of the planet he's senator of. And of course, also a, a, a frequent appearer inner of the, the Java barge log. So two out of three, nice. Ainley was recently caught on a hot mic referring to Organa as Bantha Pdu, to which Organa's campaign responded, Discruni Dopot Slimo. So that's fun. No word on their plan for um, all the slavery, though. Meanwhile, in local news, I'm pretty sure Jedi were here, and they were the ones who took that slave kid. Because, here's some news. Two definite Jedi showed up outside Mos Espa recently. One seen here in their traditional brown Jedi robe uniform. The other seen here with his lightsaber, the famous Jedi sword only they have, that are made of light that can cut through anything. And I don't know, it's just... You come here, you take this slave youngling, leave his slave mom and all the other slave people here to fly off and do what, what, what? Do you, what do they even do? They just run security for the Republic's amazing senators? That's what you're using the force for? Because according to your religion, the force is a part of us all. It binds us all together. But, 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 but you have more midichlorians, so you have the control over what's done with it. Hey, while you're here, taking a slave boy from his slave mother and leaving all the rest of the slavery here, if you like, I don't know, could have maybe told somebody in the government about the slavery we have here, would have been nice. Or even, here's some news, Tatooine Moisturizer Corps wants to build the MTD Stone Pipeline right through Sand People Land, all the while charging 10 credits for a drink of water and poisoning Anchorhead's water supply. So, I don't know, there's a negotiation for you. Jedi, also the slavery negotiation. I mean, it's no taxation of trade routes to outlying star systems in dispute, but hey, I, I guess I don't have the right amount of magic bugs in my blood to tell me the right thing to do, which is apparently save a single slave for their weird police cult while ignoring the system of slavery present everywhere in the galaxy. Anyway, I guess my point is maybe we could start talking about considering exploring the concept of a committee looking into possibly expanding the use and benefit of midichlorians to all people. Midichlorians can heal. They can probably, if utilized better, end slavery. I mean, surely, at least one of the candidates for chancellor has some sort of midichlor for all plan. Ainley Team, here, here's his. Oh, no, sorry, that's, that's his name, also in Java's barge logs, because all three of them are in it, because of course they are. Hello there. Don't be afraid. Welcome to Naboo News, and here's some Naboos. I think we have a dictator now? Because here's some more Naboos. There is unrest in the Galactic Senate. Several thousand solar systems have declared their intentions to leave the Republic. This separatist movement, under the leadership of the mysterious Count Dooku, seen here proudly displaying his Darth Plagueis back tattoo, has made it difficult for the limited number of Jedi Knights to maintain peace and order in the galaxy, something they're very concerned about. And in a move surprising nobody, Senator Jar Jar Binks said something really fucking stupid and everyone cheered. Yes, Battle of Naboo veteran and literal toady for the Supreme Chancellor made a call in the Senate to grant the Supreme Chancellor emergency powers that I'm sure he'll give up when the time is right. Do we have a clip? General Bellingham, in response to 
to this direct threat to the Republic. Misa proposed that the Senate give immediately emergency powers to the Supreme Chancellor. Order! We shall have order! It is with great reluctance that I have agreed to this calling. Fun. But also, did you catch what happened here? The senator, who only even got elected because of Jerry Mandalorians and because he bumbled around in the grass like a decade ago in a battle that he only won because all of the droids got shut down at the exact same time and now he just spends his time licking the poo from Palpatine's loosening anus? Well, that guy said we should give the Supreme Chancellor emergency power. The crowd cheered and then Palpatine accepted. That's, that's the system we have in place here. There's no, like, what, a vote, maybe? Like, like, maybe, just because this leathery, wet dumbass said something and the crowd cheered, maybe that shouldn't automatically give the supreme ruler even more power. Maybe it's a, a bad system of government. I don't know, just a thought. Maybe it's actually good that we take our cues from the fish who started his speech by saying Dello Felagates. Unbelievable, this guy. But. Like I said, no worries, because speaking of unbelievable... It is with great reluctance that I have agreed to this calling. I love democracy. I love the Republic. The power you give me, I will lay down when this crisis has abated. Very believable, very convincing. But also, no worries, he'll just, he'll just use these new powers to like, and slavery, right? Or... And as my first act with this new authority, I will create a grand army of the Republic. Oh, very cool. Bigger army. Just gonna keep piling on that defense budget and make a clone army. See, it, it's okay. It's, it's just clones. They're not real people. We're just going to grow people separate them from the adult they're grown from, put them in camps, and from birth, train them to be personalityless soldiers, and then we'll do yet another Star War and throw them at armies of droids, another class of being that we treat like trash. Mm, just, just sit back with a nice cool glass of blue milk while some clone slaves fight the robot slaves, while elsewhere, on other planets, there's also slaves. Very cool, love living in a society Especially societies where there's a senate, but also queens, but also those queens are elected. Anyway, I'm sure this is all above board. We do, after all, have the Jedi on our side. And they should know a little something about separating kids and putting them in camps, a policy actually started under them. Surely the Jedi know what's best. Not, not the people, not democracy. Except, speaking of the Jedi, here's some Naboo's. Previously unheard audio has been released by WikiLeaks of someone you may have heard of, Anakin Skywalker, the, the Jedi golden boy, the chosen one. You know that guy who we keep saying is kind of a murderous creep who hates democracy and specifically sand people? I killed I killed them all. They're dead. Every single And not just the but the and the They're like and I slaughtered them like So, mask off, huh bud? Right on. This should come as a surprise to literally nobody if you've been paying attention even a little bit. Unless you're, um, a liar. Like, I wonder what people were saying about this guy just a year ago. Anakin has a distaste for sand, not sand people. This should be obvious. He has good ideas that are necessary for our security, and anyone calling him a bigot or dangerous simply has no argument. Oh, reach out with your feelings. You know them to be true. I'm sorry, but leaked audio doesn't care about your reaching out with your feelings and knowing it to be true. But yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe he just hates sand. Not sand people. I hate. I don't know. Just seems like a guy we should be steering clear of. Just my two credits. Something to think about. 
Things are going great. Can't wait for the Star War. See ya. But also, bye. May the etc. and so forth be with and so on. Hey, what's up, my news herders? Here's some news. Nagu. I go tack tack. Okay. Also, the Clone War is over. Feels like we just kind of skipped right over it, huh? Weird thing to do for something called Star Wars news. But hey, the Clone War is seemingly over. The armistice between Supreme Chancellor Palpatine and whoever this guy is was announced just yesterday. And the streets have filled with remembrance and celebration. The Viceroy of Waste Management has asked that everyone dispose of their glowing orbs safely in the appropriate compactors. Along with the announcement that the Star Wars is over, Viceroy of Announcements declared that under a new Old Republic law, all of the clone soldiers bred to be blaster fodder in an endless Star War are now free. Do we have a clip? Do we have a hologram? Because it didn't happen? Okay. Well, hey, at least we don't have a clip of the Supreme Chancellor dressed like Death's creepy uncle ranting about how he's dismantling the entire government and reorganizing it into a galactic empire. We do have that? I mean, play it. In order to ensure the security and continuing stability, the Republic will be reorganized into the first galactic empire for a safe and secure society. So that's a thing now, and I don't know, did, did nobody feel the need to speak up here? Like, like is anyone going to not stand up for that? I mean, you're right there. You're senators. Come on. I, to the Senate's credit, Senator Amidala did hyperpost on her hollow feed, this is how liberty dies, with thunderous applause. So thanks for, for that. You did it. Seems like something to worry about. Seems like not a great guy. I don't know. Like, what's it gonna take, right? Like, during his speech, he just ranted on about this conspiracy that the Jedi tried to kill him, and they're the reason he looks like that. And he's actually the victim, and he needs all the power. And like, I mean, we give lots of crap to the Jedi, all right? Maybe on account of the whole still being cool with slavery thing and their completely ineffectual governance and police state and lots of other stuff we talk about on here. Because here on Cody Shoddy, we try to be force balanced. T M C R 2 E 4. The Jedi, the Republic, they have lots of problems. But I don't know if we should kill all of them, you guys. And his whole speech, it just seemed like this weird, like, false victimization and personal grievance stuff mixed with conspiracies and they don't seem like the best qualities in leadership especially with all of the reports from the jedi that he colluded with the trade federation to start the war and take power and even if palpatine didn't know about it there was definitely trade federation interference in the election and bail organa got more applause than palpatine anyway and i I still think applause instead of votes is a weird system, and I don't know, maybe super innocent people with nothing to hide don't hyperpost this nine times a day. Also, part of me just thinks this whole, we gotta make a galactic empire stuff was really just because he's mad he got booed at the bubble opera. That's right, recently at the Bubble Opera, to see the final performance of Gloob Marbus Tolly's masterpiece Toronto Gosh in Chimney Chudoo, the crowd booed the Supreme Chancellor for three straight hours. This was before he started looking like a Gundark's turd that was dried out in the sun and then dampened somehow, and before he started ranting about how, like, the Jedi are meanies and he's being targeted by the droids in the beep state, and now he's gotta do an empire. Just saying. Also, fun, he's still hanging out with the Jedi's large adult son and hater of Sand, who's just worried about midi culturalism, right? Like, like, maybe we don't need to keep legitimizing these creeps and violent weirdos who have all this power. I mean, if you're, if you're just gonna both sides the situation and invite people on your show and just let them say stuff like, From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. At least challenge them. And maybe don't do it in a pit of lava. Weird interview. But if you don't point out the problems with what they're saying, you're helping them. 
When you run stories called like the dapper young Sith, you're not helping. You're hyper, hyper normalizing what they're saying. That's sort of the point of view. Just don't do it. And of course, when Palpatine was asked if he's worried about what this could do for people who want to not be genocided, he responded, no, no. But while the former Supreme Chancellor and current Emperor apparently dismantles the government, what are the, what are the fine folks at Crystal Fox News worrying about? The war on Life Day continues as workers are now required to say happy all holidays including Life Day instead of a simple traditional happy Life Day. This is the death of values and tradition in this galaxy. Here's some news. There's been a mass sabering at the Jedi Academy. But Pew's dude, surely arming the masters and putting armed guards everywhere helped stop this shooting, except, oh, it made it worse? Very cool. Now, this is just another tragedy of living in times of Star Wars, happening once again. And we're the only galaxy it seems to be happening in? Weird. But in times like this, it's actually important to not necessarily focus on the perpetrator, but rather on the victims. Plibi Mirnups, Gabby Gob Giba Gib, Jerko, Crust Puss Frown Man, Jorkan Pormbus, Triss Moonsunner, Glorm, Kit Fisto, Jack Off Dancer, Aurelius Cum, Flibs Pibsy, and more, and more. Just actually hearing word that Clone Trooper 9XTC55 has released the terrorist name, which is, oh, surprise, surprise, Anakin Skywalker. The Chosen One, they, they called him that. Uh, un unbelievable. Like, maybe one dude isn't the solution to all of our problems. God, the Jedi suck so bad. Anyway, 9XTC55 also released a statement that the Jedi are all murdered, and the clone troopers helped, and now they're... Want to talk to me? Put them through? Yeah. What's your location? Uh, yeah. Everything's perfectly all right now. We're fine. We're all fine here now. Thank you. How are you? What? Who's this? What's your operating number? Fuck. There's some news I haven't seen in a long time. I'm an older Cody, but I check out. Anyway, here's Star Wars news. It is a period of civil war. Rebel spaceships striking from a hidden base have won their first victory against the totally not evil Galactic Empire. There were many casualties. But that's intergalactic news. Here on Alderaan, scientists and politicians continue to argue over whether or not the object in the sky is a moon or a space station, despite the fact that 97% of all mech techs agree that it's a space station. And they've been saying it for so long, and the people saying it's a moon sure are connected to the moneyed interests that benefit from it being a moon, huh? And recent Wookiee leaks reveal that the Flepton Brube Corporation has actually known for a long time, but hid their research. And I don't know, maybe, maybe going to the Senate and saying it's not a space station, it's a moon, see? Here's a snowball, isn't a compelling argument? Some people are even saying, actually, it's not a space station, it's not a moon, it's a consular ship. But if it's a consular ship, then where is the ambassador? You know? We've gotten to the point where we now even have younglings speaking out about this. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? And everyone claps, and it's like, no, she's talking about you. I mean, here's Bail Organa meeting with the brave youngling who's speaking truth to power. Power that's him. Like, like you're just gonna do this hologram op and wish her luck? Thanks, Organa. But there's still time. We can do something about it. Get your senator slash queen on the comm, numbers on the screen. But it's not all bad on the planet. You know, some things are bad on other planets. But also, in all seriousness, we try to keep it a little hopeful 
here on the transmission. So it's time for another installment of Some Good Old Hope, our ongoing investigation of an old man regularly seen wearing the traditional brown robe and official uniform of the Jedi Order who also has the last name Kenobi, who history buffs might remember as being the last name of a general and a uh, Jedi Knight in the Clone Wars. But this one's Old Ben Kenobi, a name that, fun fact, appears on the barge logs of the Youngling Express. Now, we've never managed an interview with Kenobi, uh, though we have recently analyzed sightings and pinpointed a small town on Tatooine lived in by an older youngling named Luke Skywalker, an incredibly unpopular surname on account of it being the last name of the genocide doer currently in charge of the galaxy. Now, Skywalker was raised by his Aunt Beru Lars and Uncle Owen Lars, the son of Cleeg Lars and Shmi Skywalker, the woman who was the mother of Anakin Skywalker Skywalker when they were both slaves. And like, I don't know what to do with that information, but there it is. Also, here's some news. There was a recent report on Tatooine of a doctor's hand being cut off by a sword made of light, and the sword was attached to the hand of another man who was wearing a traditional Jedi robe. It seems, it seems relevant, you know, it seems, seems like, like, like more people should be talking about it. But the main reason I bring this up is, notice, I said when Anakin and his mom were both slaves. Notice, I didn't say Luke Skywalker, slave. Because here's a little hope. Slavery doesn't exist on Tatooine anymore. It doesn't exist here on Alderaan. It thrived under the New Republic in the far reaches of the galaxy. But now that the Empire's around, no slavery. Am I saying the Empire's good? No. I don't know. I, they mostly just stand around in clumps and wave people along, you know? I, I'm just saying, sometimes it feels like Hell Galaxy, but there's still some good out there. And maybe for the sake of reaching across the aisle, I'm just saying, thanks, the Empire, for that at least. You know, things can get better. And if you ever feel down, just remember, Dantooine. <laughs> at least we're not on Dantooine. Do you feel warm? You do? Welcome to Cloud City News. I'm your host, Cloney Johnston, version 87X. Clones exist where people get used to it. It is a dark time for the Rebellion. Although the Death Star has been destroyed, Imperial troops have driven the Rebel forces from their hidden base and pursued them across the galaxy. Evading the dreaded Imperial Starfleet, a group of freedom fighters led by Luke Skywalker had established a new secret base on the remote ice world of Hoth. But, um... That did not go well, and they seem to be on the run again, so we'll keep you updated as we learn more. Meanwhile, Coruscant is still reeling from the destruction of the Death Star. Some are already calling for the construction of another one, with chants of Build the Ball becoming more and more frequent at the Emperor's ceremonies. He, of course, is loving it, blaming all of everybody's problems on the droids and saying he will build the ball, and Glexico is going to pay... Glexico? We went with Glexico? Outside the Emperor's speech, protesters organized, as well as counter-protesters. There were reports of fights breaking out and some property damage, and everyone there that we were able to talk to recalled hearing a voice in their head whispering, Yes, yes, give in. Most of the speech was just the Emperor bragging about how he wiped out all the Jedi, and it's like, dude, the Jedi? You're still talking about that. How long has it been? It's just, it's, it's just kind of sad at this point. But also, after a speech to the Executive Council of Viceroy's Yester Cycle, he accidentally broadcast a private conversation with Darth Vader to everybody, where he's just brazenly talking about giving Vader's wildly unqualified son a job as, like, junior guy in charge. But this is just normal now, you know? Vader, who, like clearly has some severe health problems despite claiming he's fine, he lives in this weird egg. The guy who will throw anyone under the speeder once you possibly maybe disrespect him. All, also the genocides in constant state of Star War. And crowds of people chanting for another giant kill laser to blow up planets for the personal benefit of Max Rebo's pruny scrotum. Speaking of scrotums, Lobot has announced that he's running for Cloud City's Assistant Viceroy of Executives, which means it's time for our regular segment, What's Lobot? What's going on with that guy? Hi. What's Lobot? 
What's going on with that guy? What's, what is he? Like, what's that thing he's got? Is that just like a tool he wears on his head? Does it control him? Like, is the thing Lobot? And the guy's name is like Todd? Does Lando control him via the thing? Is it, does he wear it to look smart? Like, what is it? We keep asking him and he will not answer. He just stares ahead and doesn't blink. This is video. What's, what's Lobot? What's going on with that guy? Anyway, see ya. Wait, that's it? Aren't you a little short for an episode? All right, well, for Cloud City News, I'm NewsCloney87X saying, Pumba da Wumba. You want this, don't you? All right, welcome back to Star Wars News, coming to you from an apartment in Coruscant. Feel free to check us out on PewTube and Spacetreon if you'd like to support us. Now let's get to it, because here's some news. The second Death Star has been destroyed. Actually, wait, let me back up. There was a second Death Star already built, but it's destroyed now. The Emperor is dead, and the Empire seems to be in mild retreat. Leaders of the Rebellion have stepped up to rebuild the galaxy, a new Republic that sounds an awful lot like the old Republic. Hope it doesn't fall into similar issues as before, but anyway, new galaxy from a Skywalker and an Organa. Never tried that before. Can't wait to see how that turns out. And speaking of family names like Organa that have appeared on the barge logs of the Youngling Express, here's some news. It's being reported that Jabba the Hutt has died of suicide. The gangster and trafficker with damaging information about every wealthy and powerful figure in the galaxy choked himself to death with a chain. This guy did that to himself. And there were no witnesses. And then the barge blew up. So when we asked Skywalker why he too appears in the logs, he released this statement saying Luke Skywalker had, quote, returned to his home planet of Tatooine in an attempt to rescue his friend Han Solo from the clutches of the vile gangster Jabba the Hutt. Uh-huh. Oh, I see. Uh, this just in, I'd be more inclined to believe that a radiated, hyper-warping, feral womp rat strangled him while whistling Moon's Light over the beach planet Jastifner's Imperial Shadow by Carlt Bami and the Squintle Dewburps before I believe this guy strangled himself with a chain and blew up his own barge. Interesting, Skywalker brought up Han Solo considering that wasn't nearly his first time on that barge. Solo has not responded to our requests, though Chewbacca has tried to explain, saying, Rah. Except, weird thing, about 10 cycles ago, before he joined the rebellion, Chewbacca was heard to have said, Rawr. So, weird how that works out. In other news, the adopted daughter of a senator and queen, whose birth mother was also a queen, has been chosen as interim supreme chancelloy. Meanwhile, the new Trade Federation, via WikiLeaks, still going strong after all these years, has hyper-released audio of our new interim chancelloy using the N-word. Half-witted, scruffy-looking Guess the Star Wars version of an apple doesn't fall far from the cave in a tree you gotta fight yourself in, huh? I hate Right on, bud. The Chancerroy has issued no official statement, but we do have more of this. Will somebody get this big out of my way? So, goody. In other news, words and sounds that flound like words. And furthermore. Hi, welcome to the Star News. The Star War is officially, finally, officially over after the planet battle of the planet Jakku which means it's time for official elections of who's going to be Supreme Chancellor Roemperor of the New Republic. And I'm looking at Lobot. He's the only one talking about droid rights. He spoke out frequently against the Sarlacc War. He's the only one who can really talk to the needs of the Raider class. And for cycles, he's advocated for clone rights, which has always been an issue close to my heart. Which actually brings me to goodbye. Um, it's time for me to retire. It's been a pleasure. I've been Cloney327, so... Clone rights. 
Welcome back to the News Time Variety Hour. I'm Cloney454D, and there's been another mass sabering. This time at a public park on Wabus 9, the park planet. The terrorist has been identified as Joint Tooth Sleeper and claims to be inspired by the Knights of Wren and is hyperposted under the username Darth Bad on extremist wave nets like Hate Han and Force Han. He often posted about light supremacy and was briefly a follower of a conspiracy theory called Bill Morgesuvian il Pilgrimanon because the anonymous poster goes by the letter Bill Morgesuvian il Pilgrimanon. Joink, or Darth Bad, as he preferred, also showed an affinity for the absolute clown and obvious Sither, Snoke, who's currently running for supreme leader, largely under the platform to build a ball, and it's like, we've been through this, you know? Because here's some pew pew pews. A bunch of younglings and weirdos are protesting the removal of a Darth Vader statue on Coruscant because of like a heritage and pride thing, and it's like, in what? And like, you get why maybe we don't need Darth Vader statues just around places, right? Maybe we could replace the Vader statue with an Alderaan memorial. Most holocrons in schools still say Alderaan's around. Then you get these dork-ass Vader apologists who dip into Alderaan denial, and now flat Hotherism is catching on again. And like, the other day, I mentioned Jedi to a friend, and they were like, Jedi? I thought the Jedi were a myth. But not that long ago, they were pretty prominent for millennia. I don't, our education system is failing us all. I, I, I'm starting to question the ways in which we share our information and communicate with each other. Finding artifacts, traversing terrain and stuff. Like, have we learned nothing? You know there was a droid uprising on Kessel, right? A droids rights movement. Didn't pan out, wonder why. And we don't talk about that, do we? Wonder why. Then maybe we'd have to make some changes. Anyway, they took the statue down because of course they did. Here it is happening. Fuck Darth Vader. Moving on to more of... Uh, this guy again. Earlier today, Snoke's advisor, Kylo Ren, hyperposted on his hollow feed an image of former Jedi Master Yoda as a puppeteer with strings controlling the other candidates, as well as the Trade Federation and the banking clan. The hyperpost was deemed inappropriate, offensive, and outright false by the other candidates. But when asked for comment, Kylo deemed it hilarious, adding, quote, lighten up, Snokeflake, whatever that means. In other news, people are starving. And speaking of lightening up, the Endor Forest is still on fire after three days of a constant blaze. Hello there. Here's Star Wars news. Supreme Leader Snoke has been elected Supreme Leader. And he's not like, a part of the New Republic? It's like, it's like a new thing? Like, like the sinister First Order has risen from the ashes of the Empire and it's separate from the New Republic? Which is now in the Hosnian system, not Coruscant? Oh yeah, hi, I'm here in Sunny, the Hosnian system, which is the New Republic. And a whole new bunch of kooks are in charge. And the New Republic isn't against Supreme Leader Snoke thing, but there's someone against them. And they're called the Resistance. And they're kind of a part of the New Republic. And... Uh, I don't know, it's just like, there's always so much Star War, you know? It's, it's been years since there wasn't a Star War. No matter who's dying, droids, clones, humans, other. Star War ends, here's more Star War. Tired of, uh, tired of all these Star Wars? There's, here's, here's some more Star Wars. The Star War on poverty, the Star War on drugs, Star War... It's... You know slavery's back, right? On Jakku? They just have, like, indentured servitude. That's how we treat the planet we devastated with our endless need for Star War and glowing artifacts and stuff. It's disgusting. Meanwhile, all the people on Canto Bight are sipping on their purple creams and sauces. The Jedi and the Force doing nothing about the slavery coming back that the Empire got rid of. Or, like, the Force can heal people. You know the Force can heal people, right? I don't know. They're... There are a lot of problems that led to the Empire and the Sith, and we defeated them. You know, we took care of that. But then we just, we did it all again, and surprise, here we are, again, and I, I don't know, I guess, I guess this brings us to another installment of Jedi Joke Junction, or Jar Jar Jerkshin. Petty Snoke Junction. I, 
Things are bad, folks. We seem to be made to suffer. It's our lot in life. Hello, sir. Here's a summa noosa. A laser has emitted from a planet called Starkiller Base, and the laser is heading towards us and all of the Hosnian system that you know and love. So, so long to the memorable cast of characters from the Hosnian system. Welcome to the fucking news, you piece of shit. Stuff's going on in space, but I'm here on Tatooine, and Lobot's the fucking space president, and we did midichlor for all. Check this out. Fuck yeah! We all got the force now. The droids have it. Rocks and shit, it's dope. Like, wow. Wowzer kapowzer. Anyway, the, the, the news. The news. Uh, the Endor Force is still on fire. Seems bad, but let's, let's keep it light, all right? Here's, here's Star Wars news. This morning, a report was released by Mos Espa Nature Center of Executive Viceroys pointing to evidence that feral womp rats can fly now. There's audio of the Viceroys during their breakthrough experiment. Play it. Oh, they fly now! They fly now? They fly now! Okay. Well... <laughs> I'm endangering the news, I shouldn't have come. Hello? They can use blasters now?! I'm not trained for this! This is... It's like... It's like they're the boar. It's boars, but they're womp rats from the other show. We've had fun here today, and I just wanted to say thank you for stopping by. And honestly, Merry Christmas, and only Christmas. The season where there's a Star Wars movie every year for the rest of our lives until we're dead. And even then, it will still be there. Subscribe to Disney Plus! Well, that certainly was a Star War. Check this out. Be sure to like and subscribe from your wherever you're watching the video on YouTube and check out our patreon.com slash some more news and also our podcast called Even More News. Did you notice that all the blasters in Star Wars say Star Wars on them? It's true. This was all accurate. News, news. Where could it be? Here's Star Wars news. 